Hi, I'm Lori Grover, president of the Rhode Island Divorce Mediation Center, and welcome to the Divorce Blog. Today, I want to talk about something that a lot of newly separated or divorced parents dread, and that is the holidays and sharing time with their children and their other parent. This can be an incredibly difficult emotional challenge for a lot of people, but there are some really great steps that you can take to minimize how, how severely this impacts you and also the effect that it has on your children. As a rule, setting up the holiday schedule is something that I do with all of my couples in mediation as part of their parenting plan. And the reason I do this is because it really does eliminate a lot of that last minute planning and also the hard feelings and the emotions that can get in the middle of making good decisions. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that I present to my couples to think about when they're creating their holiday schedule. So one of the things that is important is to always view your holidays through the eyes of your children. Um, most children are all the same, and they do not want to feel as though they're being put in the middle between their parents. They don't want to feel like they're hurting either parent, and they certainly don't want to feel as though they're being forced to choose. So by establishing your time-sharing schedule ahead of time, and taking into consideration what your children's needs are and their thoughts on the topic, which is fine to do. Um, you can eliminate a lot of the stress of the holidays so that when Christmas morning and Christmas day comes, it's much easier and everybody knows what they're doing. So that's number one. The second thing that you can focus on is looking at what children have been exposed to for their traditions in the past. Transitions for children going through a separation or divorce of their parents need to be gentle and there are ways you can achieve this. So take a look and uh, reflect on what the children's holidays have been like over the past years and try to mimic that as close as possible while still incorporating some of the changes that are inevitable because now there are uh, potentially more homes to, to go and visit and they'll be spending time with separate their parents separately the other thing to remember is it's important to keep children connected with their extended family so this means grandparents cousins aunts uncles on both sides of the family neither side of a child's family is any more or less important and children should not be made to feel as though spending time with that family is something that they should be ashamed of be guarded about or feel guilty about how you set the tone for your children is going to determine 99% of how they handle the holidays and how well they transition. Children who see their parents adapt well, make plans together, and perceive this as something to be um, excited about, that they're going to be spending time with their family, that's how your children are going to perceive it. When children see it as stressful, when they perceive it as a problem, that is going to be the imprint that they're going to take and stamp on holidays going forward. So it's very important for you as parents to be mindful of what you're showing your children. And this is another reason why I work out the holidays in advance with my, my clients and my couples who are parents, because this can be a really emotional, problematic thing to, to address if you're waiting until the last minute. So clarity is really the key in setting a really good tone for your children about what their new holidays are going to look like. Another thing that's important for children spending time with both of their parents on holidays is establishing new traditions, things that are unique and special to just you and the child. So just mom and the child or children have this new thing that you do every year, and just you, dad, and the children have something new that you do every year. This gives children the ability to be creative, to feel like they're part of something, to feel connected and to have something to look forward to the following year rather than their parents being separated or divorced on their first Christmas being something that they should feel sad about. We as parents set the tone for this. I can't overstate that enough. So the attitude that you go into with this is going to be everything for your children. Now, what about if you have a high conflict situation and you and your spouse really don't get along very well? There are very constructive steps you can take to alleviate confrontations and exposing your children to conflict. One of them is planning ahead. The other one is invoking the help of friends or family. 
I think people don't realize that you don't have to go it alone if you have a high conflict situation and it's okay to ask for help. So incorporate the help of a friend or family members to help transition your children between you during the holidays. Mm -hmm. This will avoid face-to-face -face confrontations if necessary and you can send your children to spend time with their other parent expressing joy and excitement for them without your feelings getting involved. And whether or not you do this depends on the level of conflict there exists between you. Some parents really don't get along very well, but they're able to set their differences aside and do the exchanges personally. Um, don't make that something that you feel you have to do and you're failing if you can't. The goal is to preserve the holidays for your children and make them feel positive about them. So if you need help, then go right ahead and ask for it. And I'm quite sure that in, in most cases, family or friends would be more than willing to jump in and assist. And if you do have a third party help with the transitions, they can bring the children in both directions um, if that's something that you feel is appropriate. And one last thing that I think is important to mention um, that can be often overlooked by parents and it may seem like a little thing to us, but it has a huge impact on children. There's so much excitement for children that get their toys and when they love their family members, equally, regardless of which side of the family they're on, it's not, um, it's not out of the question for that child to want to tuck a toy under their arm and bring something to show their other family members. We as parents should try to prevent discouraging that or offering an opinion, our opinions about what should happen with their children doing that. That can present a challenge for children emotionally and it really sends a signal that this is something bad that they wanted to do. So whenever possible, if children do want to bring toys from mom's house to grandma's house or grandma's house to dad's house so that everyone can share in their excitement, please allow them to do that. This is a child being a child. And one of the things that we have to do um, as parents, divorced parents, is discipline ourselves enough to remember that we have to be mindful of what our children are perceiving. They're not perceiving things the same way that we are. And the, I guess I'll close. I, I thought this was, that was the last thing I was going to say, but I just remember something else that's important that I want to share with you. And that would be very young children during the holidays who may not have a real recollection of, of what's going on, meaning children that may be a year and a half or two, or two years to a year and a half or less. Um, it is not any less important for those children to spend time with both sides of their family than it is for older children. Bonding, connections, interaction are equally as important and they do have an imprint on the child. So if there's anyone out there with a high conflict situation who's thinking, well, my child is only you know eight months old and this really isn't going to matter, actually it is. It's not going to matter the same as if you have a three or four year old child but there's still going to be an energy and a vibe that these children at that young age are going to pick up on and they do feel connections and lack of connections. So I guess the one question that I will ask all of you who have very young children is please, please, please be mindful of those babies and allowing them to spend time with their other parent. And for those of you who have older children, get their input, plan ahead, look at it through their eyes, start new traditions, and try to look forward to the holidays as a new beginning rather than um, sadness as an ending. And I know that's incredibly challenging to do, but those are some of the difficult realities that we're often faced with having to cope with during the divorce and the years or months that follow after. So on behalf of all of us here, whatever holiday you celebrate, I wish everyone uh, peace and harmony, and I hope that you can help make this Christmas wonderful for all of your children. I hope this information has helped you and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next Divorce Blog Weekly.